You don't have to go far to find interesting plants and animals. The average back garden provides shelter and food for many. Ants will find a tasty treat, especially if you leave some jam out. Bees will collect nectar from flowers. Robins collect grubs from the soil and carry them off to feed their young. There might be foxes visiting your garden to see what they can find. These strawberries are providing a good meal for a mouse. Tell the difference then? The toad, which you've got, is rough skin, doesn't move about as much, it, it's much less agile. The frogs do leap a lot more and struggle a lot more than the, the toads do. One thing I do notice is that yours is quite moist, whereas my, my toad, he's, he's dry. One thing that I use to recognise the, the difference between them is actually the expressions on their face, <laughs> and uh, you know, they, they do have different characters if you look at them closely. <laughs> What is the secret of beetle hunting? Well, basically looking around, grubbling around, getting down on your hands and knees. We're talking real beetles here. Oh yeah, these are proper beetles, these Recognize ones, you know, good, uh, good ground beetles. Oh, here's one here. Ooh, come back. <laughs> He's a lovely one. He hasn't got an English name. I, I call it the heath ground beetle. It's um, called Carabas ardensis. He likes uh, likes these sort of dry heathland habitats. Yeah. And well, it's a beautiful so colour. It is lovely. That is literally bronze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can find some more now. Oh! Yeah, oh, my a, goodness. Here's another. Yeah, that's one called Carabas nitens. Has, is he not got a name either? No, a lot, a oh, lot of these haven't. Yeah. Come on. Some of them are called goldsmiths. So uh, oh, well, it could, be a, could yeah. call it a heath goldsmith. Make up a name. <laughs> oh! He's a lovely one. This is one called the Hugo Land's ground beetle. Oh, this, is, this is quite a rare one. This is a, a day hunting thing. It likes to run around in the sunshine. Yeah. It can uh, it'll eat other How beetles. How do and... they feed beetles, actually? Oh, well, basically, they run along, catch anything they can get hold of. And what, uh, little tiny flies them. and um, ants? Flies. I've seen these catch other smaller beetles, yeah. and they just lock onto them with their jaws yeah. and uh, munch them, basically. <laughs> Whoa, beautiful colour. Oh, so what is this? I'm going to get... The, oh! This is uh, the blue ground beetle. <laughs> and how rare is this guy? Oh, it's very, very rare. It's only found in uh, seven woods in, in south-west England, all in Devon and Cornwall. You have a close look at it, it's got some rather large jaws on the front there. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, what it does is it'll climb up the tree following the slug's uh, slime trail. Yeah. And then once it gets hold, catches up with the slug, it grabs the slug with its pincer jaws on the front here and basically hooks onto the slug. Yeah. And then what it does is it injects the contents of it, its stomach into the slug yeah. and digests, <laughs> actually yeah. quite revolting, uh, actually uh, digest the uh, slug outside of the body and then uh, sucks up what's left. So in, in about uh, half an hour or so, this, a beetle this size would eat a slug, say, you know, bigger than itself in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Now, I bet you wish you could see that, don't you? <laughs> The sea moves in and out twice each day. It's known as the tide. At high tide, this patch of rock is underwater. At low tide, the sea's drawn back and the rocks dry out in the sun. It's changing all the time. Wet, then dry, then wet, then dry. And it makes living here really difficult. But some creatures do manage it. Look into these rock pools and you'll find them filled with all sorts of life. So what kind of creatures have you found here in the rock pool? Oh, I found two small beadlet sea anemones. If you look at them at the moment while in the water, you can see the tentacles are out on the top there. Mm -hmm. And he's actually busy feeding at the moment. If we take him out, you can see just how well attached he is to the rock. Yeah, he's completely stuck there. 
And this is very important for the sea anemone to make sure it's not washed away by powerful currents and waves in the sea. It's very firmly attached, but he can move if he wants to. He can move very slowly, perhaps from rock to rock, which enables him to find better feeding in another area, perhaps. Okay. Okay, we'll put this one back in the water. Okay, there we go. You can see we've got some seaweed down here. This is quite interesting. Like the sea anemone, the seaweed's very soundly attached to the rocks. This particular type is called bladder rack. And you can see it's got lots of little air pockets in there, which when the tide comes back in and covers the weed over water, it'll actually float up, allowing it to drift around. Seaweed and anemones have to be well stuck on because the seashore is a really tough world. All the time the waves are crashing down and nothing survives here without some sort of protection. Oh, yes. That's a big one. That looks like a shore crab to me, yeah, a male. Nice. Look on the underside. Yeah, you can see by the shape of the tail there, mm -hmm. that's a male. He's it's missing a... one of its claws. It's actually missing two legs here at the back and one of its claws. This is quite common for crabs because they often fight with each other. And then later on, they can actually regrow their limbs back again so they can grow a new claw and maybe new legs. A crab shell is like a suit of armour, protecting it against all sorts of enemies. Other crabs, poisonous fish, seabirds, and it's also a surprisingly good disguise. It's a much smaller one. Oh, a bit more aggressive as well. Green one this time. That's right, they actually vary in colour quite considerably. The reason for that is the background, you can see all the different colours you can see in the rock pool here. Mm -hmm. Now each one sort of helps to blend in, that one's got a red underside, whereas this one is green on the other side. And you can see it blowing bubbles as it's trying to breathe. I couldn't get over how much life there was in this harsh, rocky world. And Marcus had saved the best to last. Oh look, it's a starfish. Can I turn it over? Yes, no problem yeah. at all. Yeah. It doesn't bite, does it? No, they don't bite at all, they're quite <laughs> harmless. Oh, that's incredible, look, on the legs. Now, if you look down the centre of the arms, you can see his tube feet there. He mm -hmm. has hundreds of those. And they've got little suckers on the end. And is that how he clings onto the rocks? That's right, yeah. And then when they all move in the same direction, that's how it walks across the seabed. Amazing. Very pretty. I better put them back. <laughs>